Hi, my name is Peter Thomas, President of Resource Compliance. This short video provides an overview of IIAR Standard 9, which was published in March of 2020. To provide a bit of context, the document is named Standard 9 because it is IIAR's ninth published ammonia refrigeration standard. This standard represents a significant milestone for our industry as we can celebrate the completion of IIAR's suite of standards which address all aspects of ammonia refrigeration from design through decommissioning. The title of Standard 9 is Standard for Minimum System Safety Requirements for Existing Closed Circuit Ammonia Refrigeration Systems. Like all other IIAR standards, Standard 9 was published to address a specific need in our industry. The motivation for writing a standard for existing systems was twofold. On the one hand, we wanted to prevent IIAR's design standard, Standard 2, from being used as a regulatory weapon against systems built before that standard was published. For example, the 2014 version of IIAR Standard 2 increased the minimum allowable design pressure of the low side of a system to 250 PSI. However, many systems designed prior to that date utilized low side components that were designed for 150 PSI. While it was never IIAR's intent that Standard 2 be used to forcibly require extensive upgrades to existing systems, many such instances have occurred. On the other hand, as an industry, we acknowledge that existing systems do contain risks that may affect employees in the community at large. In other words, it's unacceptable to use old age as an excuse for doing nothing. IIAR Standard 9 was written to address the tension held by these two perspectives. A simple way to think about Standard 9 is as a less stringent version of IIAR Standard 2. Standard 9 contains eight normative chapters and six appendices. The normative chapters establish minimum requirements for existing systems and use words such as must and shall. These chapters are intended to be mandatory. The appendices are informational and contain non-mandatory content that complements the normative chapters. Chapter 7 is titled Minimum System Safety Requirements Applicable to All Systems and contains most of the requirements for existing systems. The biggest implication of this standard is in Chapter 8, which requires systems to be evaluated against the minimum requirements of Chapter 7 within five years from the date of publication. Appendix E provides an evaluation template that can be used if desired. To provide a big picture perspective of Standard 9, I'd like to summarize several sections of Standard 9 that align with IIAR's existing standards. Standard 9 requires that all equipment be inspected, tested, and maintained in accordance with IIAR Standard 6. Operating procedures must be developed in accordance with IIAR 7. In general, Standard 9 contains either identical or similar requirements to Standard 2 for the following topics. Ammonia purity, oil draining provision, equipment accessibility, machinery room door and alarm signage, pipe labeling, machinery room door quantity and hardware, Machinery room access restrictions, eye wash and safety showers, emergency control switches, machinery room ammonia detection, machinery room ventilation, pressure relief protection, relief valve termination. Noteworthy differences between IIAR Standard 9 and Standard 2 include. The minimum low side pressure rating is 150 PSI in Standard 9 compared to 250 PSI in Standard 2. Machinery room signage need not include the test pressure that was applied at installation. Ammonia detection is not required outside of machinery rooms. The machinery room low level detection alarm must be activated at 50 ppm as compared to 25 ppm in Standard 2. Similarly, emergency ventilation need not be activated until 1000 ppm. IIAR2 requires ventilation to be activated at 150 ppm. The machinery room ventilation emergency airflow rate is established by the requirement at the time that the machinery room was built or modified. 30 air changes per hour is not required in Standard 9. As mentioned earlier, the biggest implication of Standard 9 is the requirement to perform a minimum system safety evaluation every five years. The requirement is that existing systems be evaluated against the minimum system safety requirements contained in Chapter 7. Upon completion of the evaluation, a report must be developed that identifies gaps that were discovered. 
Gaps must be either closed by complying with the requirement in Chapter 7 or declined after demonstrating further evaluation using a PHA technique. The initial safety evaluation is due in March 2025. Evaluations must be revalidated every five years. Appendix E contains an example of a safety evaluation format that can be used. We haven't determined exactly how we will assist our clients with safety evaluations, but in all likelihood, we will be performing the evaluations in conjunction with PHAs and including the evaluation documentation in the PHA report. I trust you found this a helpful overview of IIAR Standard 9. I welcome any questions or comments that you might have. Feel free to reach out using the contact info on the screen. Thank you.